Well, hello, everybody, and as I say every time, thank you, thank you, thank you for the backing that you are providing for this game. We are approaching $7,000. Can you believe that? Almost 100 backers. I think we're at 98 as of this morning. I haven't looked recently, and I'm hoping that we will bypass 100. A lot of information on this week's update. First off, and I'm going to break this down into multiple pieces. This is for backers and non-backers, so please listen to the whole video. Watch the whole thing because there's information, especially for you backers out there, especially for you backers who are sponsoring billboards and those who think they are thinking of sponsoring a billboard. So let me just get right into it. First off, we got the music engine. Some of you may have seen it where I posted some information on Facebook. We have the music engine in here, and I have the first song in place. The first song... And the way the music is going to work is it will be like an intro music, an intro, it will play intro music into each building, and there will be a different song for each city. So there's going to be four full songs in here. First song is, as soon as I get to the right window, the first song is Baby Elephant Walk. I'm only going to play a little bit of this. The reason why it's Baby Elephant Walk, if you're not familiar with the history of Crazy Climber, when Crazy Climber was imported into the United States from Japan, it had three songs built into it. Baby Elephant Walk, The Entertainer, and a theme from the Pink Panther. Well, people complained, well, people as in the musicians complained about it, so those songs were taken out of the arcade game for the United States. You can probably guess what songs are going to be in Crazy Climber. The first city, Alpha City, is going to have Baby Elephant Walk. Beta City is going to have The Entertainer. Gamma City is going to have the Pink Panther theme. And Delta City? We'll get to Delta City. Delta City goes with the history of Crazy Climber and other things that were involved in it. And when I get to Delta City, I will tell you what that one has. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you at the beginning of each city here so that you can see the color schemes and the baddies that you have to face, not each city, each building in each city. All right, so this is Botanophobia Tower, level 1.1 in Alpha City. And in Botanophobia Tower, and as I said before, I have Invincible turned on so I don't die. In Botanophobia Tower, you are faced with windows closing, trying to pinch your fingers, and plants falling out of the windows that have been thrown at you by the people that live there. Once you finish Botanophobia Tower, you are taken to the next place, which is Hoarder's Haven. You'll notice down there the sign says, for lease, contact Millie. We have 11 signs, well, actually we have five signs, six signs, six, six signs still available. So contact me if you have any questions on them or else just become a, the work sponsor and get your name or your brand on one of these signs. So this is, this is Hoarder's Haven and in this one, we have trash being thrown at us, and we're being chased by magenta slash pink slash weird looking flies. We gotta get to the top without dying. And again, windows will pinch your fingers. Now we're at Cat Lady Center. As you can read, it gives you an idea where you're gonna be facing at this one. This one you have windows pinching you, you have cats trying to come love on you, but when they touch you, you fall, and you have balls of yarn being thrown at you. And 
And now that we beat the first three buildings, we'll come to the fourth building of the city. This is the boss level. On the boss level, you don't die as much as you don't get a bonus if you fall. So if the boss touches you and you lose your three hearts, then you fall and you go on to the next level, no bonus, or the next city, no bonus. To get to the top, you get the bonus. There is no step value for this one. And in this one, you see we have Robo Washer racing up the side of the building and he is spitting soap bubbles at me. And if a soap bubble hits me three times, I lose my chance at the bonus for this level. Again, the bosses don't kill you. The bosses are bonus levels. They're not levels to kill you. They're levels to give you bonuses. There's enough things that will kill you as you're playing the game. And now we move on to the next city. This is Beta City. This is the Avian Avery. These residents take feeding the birds to a whole new level. Notice our step point has changed. It's no longer 100 per, per climb, and it's now 200. And our bonus has changed. And this one, we have, again, windows are pinching us. We have bird seed flying at us. And I want you to also notice down at the bottom, see how I now have four men? If you gain 50,000 points, every 50,000 points, you get a man or a life. So I have four lives plus the one on screen is five lives total. That's the maximum you can get. I do not believe it will take me past five lives. I will check the code for that. And while it's going up this last piece here, I just want to note on the difficulty. I got to set on hard so you see more of the baddies showing up. But the difficulty increments and gets harder with each city. So if you start out on easy, by the time you get to the last city, you're in hard mode. And if you start on normal, you're in hard mode by the time you get to the second city. So here's the next building, Feather Financial. The tenants here believe that every feather is worth its weight in gold and have hired pigeons as security guards. Start climbing. And there's the pigeons and here comes the feathers. If a pigeon touches me or if a feather touches me, I lose a heart. If I lose too many hearts, I die. Now we're on the next level, dot 2.3, Guano Heights. Can you believe people hoard all kinds of things, including bird poop and splat? Oh, watch out for falling things. It gives you a rough idea what we're going to be facing. There's things falling at me as guano. And what are those things moving around? I call them splat. You'll call them poop emojis. All right, now we're on 2.4, the boss for this city. Beta City, can you get to the top before the Condor gets you? The faster you go, the higher the bonus. The Condor is an homage to the original Crazy Climber arcade game where you had a Condor that flew over you and dropped eggs on you and pooped on you. Well, the poop was just used in Guano. So, we have the Condor in here. The Condor is racing up the side of the building. Yeah, he's a black condor because you know what? Condors actually are black. They're not white like they were in the original Crazy Climber game. And he is throwing eggs at me. Nice, pretty, magenta-colored Easter eggs. And he's racing up the side of the building. Is he flying or is he climbing? He could be doing either one. Now we moved on to Gamma City. This is the lookout. The tenants of this building live a laid-back life. The sea, or the sun, the sea, the green coconuts. Start climbing. And they're not green coconuts, they're black. They were supposed to be green, but green didn't show up too well on here. So I need to change that text to say, the black coconuts. Or just leave it green. But as you see, in this level, you have the windows and you have coconuts falling on your head. And you may or may not notice that there seems to be more things happening on the screen. That's because the difficulty is increasing each time. We've got past hard. We're at like hard divided by two. Or double hard. 
and it just gets harder. No puns intended. Now level 3.2 of Waverly Manor. You can live on seaweed or at least that is what these tenants believe. Ninja cat surfers? Surf's up, dude. Another hint. Notice I left the 8-bit Millie sign in there just to show you that these things change. But this building is available also. See the seaweed falling down? And look at the ninja cat surfer. Some of you who are really into Comic-Con and anime and stuff may recognize that the ninja cat surfer looks awfully a lot like a Pikachu on a surfboard. He does. <laughs> but he's a ninja cat surfer. He's coming to get you. Serenity by the sea. Every day is beach party for these residents. Ah, the clams, the lobsters. Another hint. And you got clams following you in your head. You got lobsters, or maybe they're crabs coming after you. And if you notice, they're moving a little faster, and there seems to be a lot more on the screen now. And you may, be, you may ask yourself, well, what do those things, do they stop you? No, see, they follow you. So you can get them to go somewhere else to get them out of your way. Now on to the boss for this city, for Gamma City. Can you get to the top before the octopus gets you? The faster you go, the higher the bonus. Well, Gamma City is a water world type city, so obviously it's going to be an octopus. The octopus races by on his jet of water, throwing ink splats at you. Keep climbing, try to avoid him. You may wonder, how's the octopus flying through the sky? Did you wonder about the ninja surfing cats? Okay. Sometimes you need to suspend belief and just believe what you see. Okay, now I'm going to pause here for a second. Just let these keep scrolling by. And I'm sorry that there's a truck backing up outside. They've been unloading something. The next level, Delta City, you'll know instantly when you see it what it is. But let me give you a little backstory. Back in 1980, a person working at a very well-known Japanese video game company wanted to make a game of a man climbing up the side of a building. And being attacked by a giant gorilla. Just like the game that already existed, Crazy Climber. So he went and created a game of a man climbing up a building and being attacked by a giant gorilla. So as an homage to that game, that's right. I'm pretty sure you recognize this one. One girder plaza, the future is up in the sky. We must build if we are to have a place to live. Did you bring your hard hat? Start climbing. This city is slightly different. There are no windows. Instead, there's girders falling on your head and the ladders disappear. Starting to recognize some of this here? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you do. And oh, when I was talking about the theme songs for each city, the theme song for Delta City is going to be Donkey Country. Donkey Kong Country. It's going to be kind of cool. It's getting converted to the sheet music now. Or the sheet music is getting converted to the notes now, I should say. So let me just keep climbing up here. i got to avoid the ladders that disappear. If a ladder disappears, it's like a window pinch in me. I fall. And if a girder hits me on the head three times, I fall. So let me keep climbing. On to the next city at 4.2. Space Needle. Rockets. Who needs rockets? We are building a needle to pierce the night. Start climbing. What do we have on this one? Oh, we have hammers falling or flying at us and we have bricks falling on our head. And we have ladders disappearing. So you, you probably get an idea where we're going with this.
Now we move on to 4.3. The Torch. Burn, baby, burn. Smoke is progress. And this one, we got barrels falling on our head and flames coming at us. Yeah, it's starting to look a lot like that game that was a inspired by, at the very least, the original Crazy Climber. But it still plays like Crazy Climber. Now on to the final building, 4.4. Delta City, can you get to the top before the king gets you? The faster you go, the higher the bonus. Now, I just want to let you know, I did not use what you think I was going to use for the graphics on this one. I used something else. Oh, look at that. I got a little bug there. Why do you stay there? Ooh, can I? I'm gonna have to fix that. <laughs> That's interesting. See that? He's not. He's not disappearing. But what we have here, if you could probably see, is this is the original Crazy Climbers King Kong, being lifted up by balloons, and he's throwing bananas at our head. And for one reason or another, it is not erasing him. Hmm. I gotta look at that and see why. I'm glad I found a bug now instead of later. And there we go. I finished all 16 buildings. And what's this? Does this remind you of Paperboy? It does. I figured, you know what? It's a lot better than just saying game over and showing a score. So let's put a little thing on here. So what we have here at the end is the paper that the city would put out the next day. Shows I'm a winner. Shows my score. The letters right after my score says my difficulty and whether I use single or dual controllers. Then below it says Cecil gets key to the city. And then in the next story, ticker tape parade soon. And then down at the bottom, 8-Bit Millie Games announces next game title, which I'm not doing yet. And no, it's not Paperboy. All right, so I went into the code and turned off Invincible so I could die, so I could show you what happens when you die. And I discovered a bug, which I fixed. Um... It wasn't taking me to the I can die screen when I fell, it, so I had to fix that. I mean, the stuff I have to do. <laughs> um, the, the issue with King Kong sitting at the top of the screen and just staying there is basically screen garbage. Um, because I put in a, an incrementing of the hardness level or the difficulty level, it got to the point where it wasn't catching that King Kong had actually moved off the screen. Because at that high hardness level I had, which is the highest you could possibly get, um, King Kong was moving way too fast for it to catch it. So I just had to change the code a little bit. I'll fix that and debug that some more. It's nice to see those bugs show up now instead of later when they're already on cartridge. So I just want to show you right now, right here, what happens when you die. So I'm just going to go in. Oh, I'm going to choose hard level again, just, just for gets and shiggles. I'm going to die real quick anyways. <laughs> And this game is hard. I mean, it may look like because I'm playing the game in invincible mode, it may look like it's easy, but this is not a very easy game to dodge these things. I got hit once. And... And I got hit too. See my little hearts are disappearing? All right, that's two falls. I only have one life left, the one that's on the screen. And I'm going to get... I want to lose that so I can show you what happens. One more hit. And I died. And I get the nice little newspaper telling me that. And on this, it's a little different than the other one. In the top left-hand corner, it tells me what stage I was on. I was on 1.1. It tells me my score. 39,000 or 30,900 points. It tells me my levels. I was in hardness and single control. And then it says Cecil falls to his death. Bystander hit by body. Ew. And 8-Bit Millie Games announces next ti game title. And again, it's not Paperboy. So there we go. That's those right there. Now... For all of you who are backing the game and have paid for the works, which gets you a billboard, we have 11 cities left. And I'm going to show them on the screen here so that you can see them. These 11 cities all need to have a backer. So you five people, and I'm saying five because Glenn... 
because it was his idea to put billboards on there. He got the first shot. That's why you see that he's on there. And I'll show you in here. Uh, that's right, because I got you at the death mode. You don't get to see that. So Glenn, he gets the first building. But that leaves 11 other buildings. I already have one person sniffing around for one of the Donkey Kong levels, which is Delta City. It's not Donkey Kong, but I call it the DK levels. He's sniffing around wanting one of the DK levels. So, I need everybody to contact me via email. I'm not sure if Kickstarter has my email address, but if it doesn't, this is my email address. It's 8bitmilly at gmail.com. All you sponsors who are at the $150 level, you need to contact me and let me know what building you want. Again, the list is on the screen here. Let me know what building you want. Your first, your second, and your third choice. That should get everybody. Because it's going to be first come, first serve. Whoever email comes in first and says they want a certain building, they get that building. And, you sponsors, I need to know what your billboard looks like. Here it's 64 pixels wide, 16 pixels tall. Two colors, no aliasing. Two colors. If you do not or cannot do not want to or cannot design it and you just want to have some text let me know what the text is and I'll lay it out for you those of you who are not backing the game yet or are considering backing it or are backing it at a lower level we have six buildings left this is six chances for immortality you can have your name on one of these buildings or you can have your wife's name or your girlfriend's name or your boyfriend's name or your child's name or your dog's name. As long as it's clean and as long as it's not offensive, you can have it on there. So there you go. That's the big, big update this week. As you can see, the game is progressing very well. And just, just keep in mind, I keep saying I play in invincible mode, which basically means is I got dying turned off. Because I have dying turned off, I can just keep going through it. It's, it's almost as if I got one of those stars in a Mario game and I can just run through things. So nobody kills me. So it looks like the game may be easy. It is not easy. It's a very hard game. When I turn it on, it's very hard to play. It's kind of easier with the keyboard, but not that much easier. When you get that joystick out, it's a very hard game to play. And not hard as in if it's hard mechanically. Hard as in it's a very difficult game to try to beat. So this is going to be a hard game for you to get a high score on this one. And then there's multiple levels. There's three different difficulty levels. And you can go dual controllers. And dual controllers is a whole new ball game trying to beat that one. I tried a couple times. I will eventually maybe figure it out. But dual controllers are hard to play. So there you go. As I said in the beginning of this thing a long time ago, we are at $6,800. We st we, our goal was $3,000. We have matched and beat that goal. We beat it to a pulp. And this is just going awesome now. So, if you're out back in the game, please consider backing it. I've got cartridges coming, and I'm going to show pictures of what the cartridges look like in next week's update with the labeling and I'm working on the packaging remember at different levels oh and also remember the stretch goal that stretch goal that we had in there at one point when this is finished up and people start sending their backing in before it all before we finalize and start sending things out I'm going to need to know from everybody what do you want a data pack or a mug you get there you ask an extra gimme that's an extra good thing for you if you haven't had them get the data pack if you don't care about data packs then get the mug Mug going to be pretty cool. White mug with CCR on it. It's going to be kind of cool. We also had the other stretch goals that we had in there. Um, oh, and I just glossed over the cartridge. The cartridges, the custom cartridge, are not doing salvage cartridges anymore. It's being made by a cool person over in Germany. Some of you may know who he is. Um, the one stretch goal about the Super Game module, we're putting that in there. We decided, me and my wife, Heather... We were discussing it, and we decided that the ColecoVision already has great sound. So there's no reason in reinventing the wheel just for the Super Game Module and nobody else. But the Super Game Module offers extra RAM, and so does the Atom for extra RAM. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some extras in the game that add animation to various sprites, or basically the CCR. 
using that RAM that's available in the Super Game Module and in the Atom. What was the other thing we we're going to mention in here? Uh, Super Game Module, Module Atom. Oh, the editor. The editor is going to be very Game Genie-like. At first, the editor was going to be a level editor, let you build your own city or build your own building. But you know what? That That's... In the long run, we already covered all those bases with what we're doing with the game. But the game gene is a little different. It's going to be possible to push a button, maybe fire button, maybe the arm button, something. You're going to push a button, and it will pop up a screen that shows you all the values possible to change in RAM. So you know what you could do? You could jump to another section of ROM and interpret it as if it's a building. You can give yourself unlimited lives, make things go very, very slow. All kinds of crazy stuff. Give you something to do. Sit there and play and try to figure out how to... Because you're not going to break the game. You're just going to make the game really weird. So there we go. That's my update for today. I hope everybody made it to the end here. And if you're listening to these updates, comment on it. Leave a comment on Kickstarter. Tell me how you like the game. Tell me if you think I'm missing out on something. I'd love to hear back from everybody. And again, please, if you haven't packed the game, back the game. Because if you want to play this game, you're going to need to back the game to get a copy of the game. Otherwise, the game may or may not be available at the end of the year for non-backers. Um, depends on how well we do with the Kickstarter. If the Kickstarter goes over well enough, I may not release the game at the end of the year for just public sale. Because my Kickstarter supporters are being awesome, and why should I... Part of me is like, well, why should I just let the ones that are watching just buy the game later? So we'll see. I probably will, but we'll see. Have a great day. Another update next week. Hope you enjoyed this one.